Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hungry Microbiologist. The lab safety rules remain the same, and this continues to not be a lab. Normally I consider that a good thing, since it means we can eat and drink whatever it is we make around here. But today it's become a bit of an issue. I don't have the lab equipment that I need for my next big idea. So we're going to start another bit of a mini-series on the channel. We're going to call Getting Hungry. In it, I'm going to show you how to make some of the cheap lab equipment that I have just for my personal use and for messing around on this channel. What I've got in front of me is actually one of my earliest cheap lab equipment projects. Uh, when I was in a school lab, one day I asked my instructor why we didn't have a rocker. It's a very standard piece of bio equipment. It literally rocks side to side. You use it for so many things that you don't want to settle or that you want to cover in a stain, etc. Very versatile, very useful thing to have. And we didn't have one. Uh, in the lab where we were working, we quite often would use our shaker for everything. And if we needed to remove the shaker, that was a little upsetting. The students that were just taking classes would often tape things to the side of a shaking incubator and run batches that way. It was a little ridiculous in my mind, so I asked, why don't we have a rocker? The professor just kind of shrugged and I accepted that for a while, but then I looked up how to get a rocker. And the prices kind of upset me. I ended up taking it a little bit personally and set it on myself to begin designing 3D printed components that I could use to build my own rocker. What I need to be working with LB Media, or specifically the LB Broth, we've already shown you LB Auger, and that worked great simply using the Incubator 3 Pro. The Incubator 3 Pro, uh, turns out it doubles as a 3D printer, so that's how I got these pieces. But it doesn't work as a shaking incubator. I need a shaking incubator. So we're going to make this rocker that I already have designed. Then we're going to work on designing a heater. This heater that I've worked out here, as you can see, it's going to be powered by an Arduino, running a 5 volt heater. The heater is largely just a powerful resistor that will generate heat. To control that, we're going to be using a thermistor. A thermistor is just a variable resistor that changes resistance based on heat. So ultimately, this circuit here is just three resistors all serving different functions. What it'll do is ideally keep everything. I've actually got it set to 40 degrees. As you recall, we run our media at 37 degrees, human body temperature. What lives in your house thrives inside your body. However, since this is all a little bit improv, admittedly, I am going to be raising it up just a little bit. Whatever is in the media will be on top of my heater, sloshing side to side. I don't know where exactly to place my thermistor optimally. So we're going to go with 30, or we're going to go with 40. Assume that the media will stay a little warmer at the bottom, a little cooler at the top and probably in the end work out just fine. So let's get started. I said I have designed and worked with this rocker before. And as you can see, I have already printed most of the pieces. So all the big jumps and clothing changes you're gonna see are mostly just gonna be me waiting for glue to dry.
I'm going to show you one of my favorite hardware store hacks. This is how to get yourself a nice simple base for any of your projects that are going to be unstable. Possibly move side to side, but you don't want them running all over your desk. Or just, you need something hard and flat to be a surface for them. What you want to do is just go into Lowe's and just buy one singular floor tile. They are 59 cents for a one square foot. You don't have to buy a full floor's worth. You can just buy just one tile. And there you have it. That's 62 tenths with the tax. I have one perfectly flat, weighted, rock solid base for any project I'm working on. If I were to actually design my 3D printed projects with bases, that would be two to three dollars worth of filament at a minimum. Wouldn't be weighted nearly as nicely. And it would add several hours to my print time because that's about the size. It's actually bigger than my entire print bed. So it would definitely just have to cover the whole thing with that ultra slow first layer. Terrible idea. Thank you Lowe's for your wonderfully cheap flooring department. Okay, I know it's not necessarily the way the time lapse worked, but right now we're at a pretty good pause point for me to uh, talk for a second. I'm waiting on the heater unit to get in so we can finish this off and turn this, as you just saw, a successful shaker into a shaking incubator. When I get all the directions for everything down below, what you just watched me finish off was the electronic circuit. That's not anything I came up with. Again, that's another 3D printed part that another maker made. I'll be sure to link to that. And you can also find all these electronic pieces on eBay. All it is is a low voltage cutoff switch, a buck transformer, and a pulse wave modulator to control the DC motor. All just purchased bulk. <clears throat> now, there is something I want to bring up. If you were watching the video and you saw it closely, you saw my buck converter start shooting off sparks, and then I was worried it was broken, so I put the wires into it, and then tap them together to see if they would spark to make sure that it was still functioning. And I just want to remind you that this channel is not, it's not even at the level of do as I say, not as I do. This channel is at the level of don't idolize me, don't imitate me. If you're going to go building anything that I do here to use in your home, or your not a lab, or your lab, uh, please be smarter than me, and be more careful, and practice much more safety. Thank you. I don't want any of my viewers doing anything nearly as stupid as what I do. Okay, so we're another important part in the project. I have currently that LED representing where I want the heater pad to be. I have the heater pad running, and I have my thermistor down here. However, connect my, th my heater pad to my thermistor. We can generate enough heat that it will turn off that LED. So the Arduino and the program are responding as appropriate. However, I cannot get it to draw enough power to power this heater pad. So I will get back to you as soon as I have that problem resolved. 
So to solve that last problem I mentioned, here's my MOSFET switch. That is exactly what I said I needed. It's going to take a signal from the Arduino and then channel a 12 volt power supply into my heater. There is now wrapped inside the heater coil. And as it cools up and heats down, it stays regulated by turning the MOSFET on and off and using the 12 volt power supply to power the heater. All right, guys, that concludes this special episode of Getting Hungry here with the Hungry Microbiologist. Here at the Nano Lab, we've just gone through a serious upgrade. This rocker here will be working to keep liquid media agitated, and this improvised incubator will be able to keep things warm. This is my first Arduino powered piece of equipment here in the Nano Lab. It is absolutely amazing the way we were able to use a thermistor connected directly to our heat, the MOSFET switch to power the heat source, and the Arduino to turn that all on and off as it goes. That'll keep everything growing just like it used to on the Incubator 3 Pro. But now we can put that wherever we want and have this nice, shaking, moving environment to work with liquid media. Guys, thanks for joining me. I've got another Getting Hungry episode already in the works, just due to the shipping time of some of these parts. The other one is nearly ready to come out. Only thing you'll notice change there is a much worse video quality since I am building a spectrometer and I made the spectrometer run off my phone's flashlight. Not the best idea since that's what I record on, but uh, if you can sit through watching me work with my laptop camera, that is going to make for some really interesting tinkering and engineering bits, and eventually for a really nice video when we start working with LB Media. Till next time.